Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session, we have started the Python programming. So in that we have seen the introduction and the features, basic features and applications of Python. And then we have seen how to download and install the Python software. So it is a free software and it is a platform independent so that it can be installed in any environment. And also it's an interpreter. So after writing the program, we need not compile the program directly. We can execute the program. So by default, after writing the code, the code will be uh, directly converted into the bytecode so that we can directly, we can execute the program. So in this session, let us have a look on how to execute the program, the procedure uh, to execute the program and then we will move on to the literals, literal constants. So first, how to execute the program. So the very first step is we have to write the code. That means we have to write the instructions. So for writing the instructions, we need to open the editor. So here in the previous session, we have installed one IDLE. So you can find this in your system after installing the Python. So open this IDLE. Right? So you will get a window. With these symbols so there you can find file menu so open this file so open the new file open the new file and now after opening the new file write down the instructions write down the instructions right so instructions are nothing but a program, right? So program is a set of instructions. So we have to write the instructions and then save the file with the file name with extension dot py. And after saving the file, now directly run the program from IDLE. So for running the program, we can directly press F5 all or directly you can find the option run. So click on this run so that you can find the run program. So click this run so that you can, the, the Python will be, I mean the program will be executed in the Python shell script. Right? So this is the procedure to execute the any Python program. So first we have to open the IDLE, open the new file, write down the instructions and then save the file with the file name, any file name. So with the, but the extension should be, is it .py. So in the C language, the, the extension should be in a .c. Here the extension should be in .py. And the last step, we have to run the program using the IDLE. That means directly we can click by using F5. So this is the procedure to execute the program. Now, let us look on to the literals. So all these are the basics of Python. So literal constants. literal constants now here in this literal constants we are going to focus on two things one is on numbers another one is strings right so numbers can be integers floating point numbers you can say it as a fractional numbers and even a complex numbers 
even a complex numbers. So strings can be single character or group of characters. Right? So these are the different literals we are going to discuss. The numbers, integers, floating points and complex numbers. Now, let us see one by one. First, we will move on to the numbers. So, how many ways, how many categories, or how many ways of, I mean, uh, different numbers we can use in this Python. So, as we know, the integers. So, integers are some like 3, 5, 7, 100, 3, 5. 350 and so on all these are the integers so there will be no fractional part only the integral part next floating point numbers so floating point numbers consists of fractional part so fractional part like 1.4 5.6 3.142 3 and so on so all these are the floating point numbers Next, coming to the complex numbers. So here in Python, we can also use these complex numbers directly. Where in C language, we can't use these complex numbers. In order to execute these complex numbers, we have to uh, use the structures concept to uh, perform the operations on complex numbers. But in Python directly, we can use these complex numbers um, by using some data type, right? So complex numbers, In terms of uh, a plus i b like 5 plus 3 i so all these are the complex numbers so here if we want to store a long integers that means with large values right so long integers or large values so see long integers if you want to store or assign a value to the uh, variable as a long integer, we need to add a suffix L or capital L. So, any number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 4, 5. So, this number is a very large number and it can be used, stored in long integer. And this number is represented as a long integer if we add l as a suffix to this number so in order to represent this long integers we have to suffix the l to the particular number so unless you add the suffix l it will not be represented as a long integer right for every long integer this l must be suffixed it, it can be in a small case i mean lower case or upper case but the suffix must be added right so here we can have the three possibilities using these numbers so for example uh, 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 as i have explained earlier if a is a variable a is equal to 5 is well valid a is equal to 5.43 is valid a is equal to 5, 4, 3, 2, 7, 8, 9, 4, 6, L is valid and A is equal to 5 plus 4, I is valid, right? So this is the integer, this is the float or fractional, this is the long integer and this is the complex, the complex number. Right? Next. So here in this Python programming, there are three possible cases while performing the arithmetic operations on two numbers. So first one. Arithmetic overflow. Right? Arithmetic overflow problem. Next, arithmetic underflow problem. Next, 
नेक्स्ट लॉस ऑफ प्रिसीशन प्रॉब्लम राइट सो देर आर थ्री पॉसिबल प्रॉब्लम वी कैन गेट इन दिस पाइथन प्रोग्रामिंग फर्स्ट वन अर्थमेटिक ओवर फ्लो प्रॉब्लम दैट मीन्स इफ वी आर ट्राइंग टू मल्टीप्लाई टू लार्ज नंबर्स सो मल्टीप्लाई टू लॉन्ग इंटीजर्स राइट लॉन्ग फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट इंटीजर्स कैन सिंपली राइट एस अ टू लॉन्ग फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट नंबर्स दैट मीन्स इन टू राइट so if you want to try to multiply two long floating point numbers obviously we can get the result as inf which is called as infinity that means we will get the result as a very long integer right so very long integer or a floating point so it's very long so that's why the python will return the value as inf that is infinity so this will happens only when the Uh, two large point large floating point numbers are used to multiply next under flow so here also so if two this uh, this problem will comes in division right so here if the numerator sorry yeah. if the denominator is large then numerator if the denominator is larger than the numerator then it will results the python will result into result it as a zero zero so for example 1 divided by some 10000 so it will result as 0.0001 sorry 01 so this kind of result the python will give the zero right that is almost equal to zero so this is one problem that is arithmetic underflow problem this will occur when you perform the division operation in python next loss of precision so here also this occurs when you perform the division operation the division operation so if the numerator is divided by denominator and the result is a never ending then we call it as a loss of precision so if that for example so i will explain it for example if you perform 10 divided by 3 so what is the result so 3.33333 and so on and so on right so there is never any so in this cases we will get the loss of precision here also the best example i can say so 1 divided by 3 1 divided by 3 right so 0.333 and so on here also so in this cases so in these cases we will get the problem that is the loss of precision here this is we call it as a precision so after decimal point the values we call it as a precision so there is no finite ending above of this precision is in such cases 10 divided by 3 so in such cases this problem will be arise so these are the three problems may occur in python programming so by using this arithmetic uh, operator operations so first one arithmetic overflow that will occur if you multiply two large floating point numbers so the result will be given as infinity inf and arithmetic underflow problem so this will occur when you perform the division operation so if the denominator is large than the numerator 
then automatically the Python program will result it to zero. And loss of precision problem. So this will also occur when you perform the division operation. So if there is more limit on precision value. So example 10 by 3. So this is also one type of problem. These are the three major problems we can get in number system. And also in this Python programming we can uh, represent any number in a hexadecimal format or octal format. So it will be allowed. Right. Next. Next one, we will move on to the second letter that is strings. Strings. Right? So, strings here we will use single quote. Double quote, triple quote. So single quote is represented using this one. Double quotes are this one. Triple quotes are this one. So here um, in our Python programming, the strings can be represented in any three. That means by using a single quote or a double quote or triple quote. So these two are same. Single quote and double quote are same. So we can represent the string in this way or in this way. There is no change among these two. Coming to this triple code, we have to use this triple code in a multi-line string. Multi-line string. Right? So that means for a paragraph, we can simply say that for a paragraph, we can use this triple quotes. That means if any string is represented in more than one line, then that multi-line string can be used. That means a triple quotes. So for example, So if you had a string, welcome to Python programming. So this string is in two lines. So we need not use single quote, double quote. We have to use this triple quote because this is this string appears in more than one line. So triple quote. Use the triple quotes. Right? Hope you understood the strings. Now, next. Escape sequences. Escape sequences. So if you want to print the text as what's your name, simply by writing the print statement. This won't give the correct output. It will show the error because this symbol, the single quote symbol, is not cannot be represented in print directly. So, for printing this single quote, we have to use some escape sequences, right? So, in order to print the special symbols in the print. I mean, in the uh, on the screen, we have to use this escape sequences. So, uh, and this we call it as a backslash constants in our C language, right? So, in order to print the single quote, we have to represent that as backslash single quote, backslash single quote, right? So, in order to represent the slash, slash, slash. So, this represents the single quote 
slash in order to print the slash in display screen slash 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 double quote right slash double quote slash n that is for new line that we know in the C language so new line slash t is a tab space this also we know in the C language similarly slash o is a represent the octal value right so octal value slash x is for hexa value hexadecimal value right so in order to represent this one so just we have to rewrite this one so print what slash single quote yes your name so this will print the correct one because the single quote is represented by using the escape sequence slash single quote so these are the different escape sequences so we will use more in the programming the slash and then slash t rather than the single quote slash double slash and all these things we will frequently we will use these two escape sequences in our programming so this is for new line character that means uh, printing in the new line and then this is for tab space right hope you understood these escape sequences now let us move on to the raw string Raw string, raw string, raw string means whatever you are writing on the printf using this printf, the same will be displayed on the screen. So whatever the information you are writing in print, the same will be printed on the screen. So it will uh, not allow any escape sequences. So you know for that we have to represent R in print for printing the last string right so if you represent r in print the text whatever you are writing in the print that will be exactly will be displayed on the screen so for example the same statement so this statement will print the output as this one right because here single code uh, in order to print the single code we are writing slash single code so if the same print I have modified as R comma, so I am representing as R. That means raspy. So I am. So user or a programmer is insisting the interpreter to consider the complete text as a raspy. So the escape sequence has not been allowed. So here, if you write the same what slash single quote yes, your name. The output will be the same. What slash single quote yes your name. So here the interpreter will not consider this as a escape sequence because here the programmer insisting the interpreter to print the last string. So for this last string, we have to place R in the beginning of print. Right. This is all about the escape sequences. Now, string formatting. String formatting. So, string formatting means just alignments. So, alignments can be left alignment right alignment and center alignment right right left alignment right alignment and center alignment so this is represented as a less than symbol left justify right greater than symbol for right justify and cap symbol you can observe this cap that means uh, in c language we call it as an bitwise or operator xor operator 
right? So this is the cap. This symbol represents the center alignment. Let me explain with an example. So if you want to print hello, right? Or we can simply by writing print. hello comma c inverted commas less than 30 this implies 30 characters that means total length is 30 characters and this implies the le left alignment right oh, sorry le so, or left to justify so the text will be displayed on the right side itself from the right most so here the spaces will begin from here to here the total length is 30 and the text will be printed here right and similarly print hello greater than 30 that is the right justify so the text will be on the left side so if this is the total length of characters 30 the text will be printed on the right side so this is the left justify so justify this is for justify left justify right justify so which we can see in our uh, words word, windows word right justification so by using this justification the space will be considered right the space will be adjusted so that the complete text will be in a same alignment so here one more thing left justification means that is not implies the text is printed on the left side the spaces will be justified right so left justify means the spaces will be justified on the left and the text will be printed on the right and right justify means the spaces will be justified on the right and the text will be justified on the left next print hello cat 30 that is if the total length is this one that means 30 characters the cap means center alignment so the spaces will be equally justified on left side and right side after after displaying the text right hope you understood this is not this is not alignments of the text this is the alignments of the spaces right so that's why we are specifying the total length of the string so here this statement implies the total length of the string is 30 right total length is 30 and it is the justified this one i mean uh, the justification is on left side that means the complete spaces will be on the left side after displaying the text and here right justification this is the center justification center alignment so here the right rightmost spaces and the leftmost spaces are equal after displaying the text. So likewise the text will be aligned in the center. So I hope you understood this uh, string formatting. Right? So let us stop here. So we have seen uh, different uh, these two literal constants that is the number constants and the string constants. So in that numbers here in python programming uh, the interpreter will accept the numbers integers or floating points and the complex numbers and in that three problems may arise while performing the arithmetic operations that is underflow overflow and the loss of precision so underflow will appears uh, sorry uh, overflow will uh, maybe existed if the operation is on multiplication that means if we want if you are trying to multiply two large float floating point numbers then uh, the possibility of this that overflow may occurs and coming to this underflow if the denominator 
is a large number than the numerator then that underflow may occur that means a division if you performing the division and the loss of precision also may occur when you perform the division right if there is no finite steps to get the precision value so example we have seen and then we have move on to the strings there we have seen the string can be represented by using the single quote double quote and the um, triple quotes so here a single character will be also considered as a string so there is no a separate characters right so every character is also a string so the double quotes and a single quotes both are having the same meaning so we can use a single quotes or a double quotes for representing the string and for representing this multi line string we have to use the triple quotes and then we have seen the raw string so escape sequences so in order to print a special symbols on the display screen like single quote double quote or a slash backslash and everything so and a new line character and the tab and finally we we seen the string formatting this justification of the spaces so left to justify right justify and the center just so once you execute this program so that you can clearly understood this so let us stop here if you really understood my videos like my videos share my videos with your friends and if you are having any doubts regarding this python programming uh, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that i will definitely try to clarify all your doubts so thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you very much